Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. My name is Brian Moss. Today, man, I threatened uh, everybody on the channel before I went to Japan. Gonna get a little shoot interview and do some vids with Koenji Sean, Japan Book Hunter on Instagram. Sean, thank you for uh, inviting us into your uh, into your studio, into your warehouse, whatever you want to call it. And yep. we were sitting amongst your personal collection yep. of manga here. Any idea uh, how many pieces of... Uh, of work you have in, in your personal? In my personal collection here at the office and not counting up my my home up the road, uh, I don't know, I'd say I have about a thousand thing, a thousand to fifteen hundred manga that I've curated up here. A few art books, um, but a couple board games, but mostly manga. Yeah, That's what I do. Just show this off to the people. Tell the people what that is right there. This is Kabatu. This is a sealed Kabatu, never opened. Amazing. Yeah. Still has the 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 tag from the, the the shop put on there and still has the seal on it. Amazing. And uh, just happened to run into this, just luck, pure luck. You have a lot of that uh, in your in your hunts, man. Uh, a lot of stuff just kind of uh, you're in the right place, right time. Um, when I first met you, you said that you like for your business, you like to stack stuff that Madarake doesn't. You like to fill fill that niche, and and for people at home. Mandarake is kind of like the big chain mm -hmm. of old pop culture stuff. It's a secondhand shop. You don't buy new stuff at Mandarake. No. You buy stuff that people kind of turn in. Uh, there's very limited real estate uh, in Japanese homes, so there's a turnaround of yes. a lot of uh, stuff that they buy. But what are the uh, books that you specialize in? Well, I like weird, wild, esoteric, just underground stuff. My personal collection, I like a lot of the stuff, uh, Gekiga stuff from the 70s, from the 80s. Anything that's like, you know, erotic spy thriller kind of stuff mm -hmm. to like really underground shoujo horror stuff. Uh, Kondomori from early 1990s did some real like sp splatter heavy splatter like but it was shoujo horror you know made for little girls yes yes you know the, you, you just you just you just hit on something uh, that a lot of people don't know and it's something that we discovered on our last trip the junji itos the mm -hmm. hideshi hinos mm -hmm. the uh kazuo uh no 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 uh, uh umezu yep all the umez mm -hmm. stuff uh these were in shoujo horror shoujo anthologies exactly exactly it's, that's where they came out girls comics. yeah these are girls comics so like yeah maybe the most insane opening scene in any shoujo horror is the scene where uh shows little sister has scissors come out of her face <laughs> and god's left hand devil's right and uh that was made for little girls yeah. so yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because it actually crosses over in america because with e <clears throat> Chandra Ito, that stuff, you'll see like teenage girls wearing that clothes and hot mm. topic now and stuff. So it's pretty pervasive. And so that's really cool to hear it cross over. Yeah, it does seem like uh, the horror is more directed towards it. But of course, there's, you know, boys read it and collect it as well. And grown ass men like <laughs> me. But <laughs> you also mentioned the word uh, Gekika. So Gekika really, it means kind of like real pictures. In other words, more life-like stories and manga. And they really emerged in the 60, late 50s with uh, uh, maybe Iji Mashiro, that kind of stuff. Um, Black Ace Magazine, 1968, around there. You start seeing them because the kids that grew up in the Kashihon or the rental comics era in the 50s, by the time it came to the late 60s, they were grown adults. And they were still into reading manga. So construction, they had to start... People were producing manga for, you know, construction workers, for cab drivers. And that's where you got these, like, real picture stuff. And that's where you got the, the, everything from the lone wolf and cubs. And, you you know, like, Google 13. It's, you know, it's sexy. It's spy thriller, James Bond-esque. That's more for adults right. than it is for, geared for kids. So, uh, yeah, all the geeky goss stuff, I just, I just love it. I mean, of course, you get some, I mean, some of the, I'd say, go in a guy was big in pushing a lot of stuff towards adults. Right. But then you also have like his assistants like Kaze Shinobu. Yes. You know, you the strongest man on the face of the planet. And that's very much made for adults, not for kids, right? Yeah, we got some videos uh, about the great Kaze Shinobu. He was one of my great discoveries uh, the first trip to uh, Japan. A bunch of people put different Kaze Shinobu books in mm -hmm. hand. And I actually recognized his work from, uh, from Heavy Metal. He had a couple of pieces in there. Now, Sean, you speak uh, very, very uh, fluent English. 
Where do you come from, man? Oh, dude, <laughs> and a good question. I'm from Seattle originally. I grew up in the States, you know. I'm not Japanese, I'm a quarter Filipino, and uh, I came to Japan 20 years ago for school. Just never left. Fell in love with the place, you know, and uh, had friends here already that were friends of mine when I was in university in America. Decided to take an extra year to study over here. And then um, just, you know, trying to learn the language. Japanese is hard when you're not, when you don't grow up here. I didn't start learning Japanese until I was 19, something like that. So aging myself a little bit here. But, and then uh, I think that we had chatted about this before in the past, but I'd probably been here for like 10 years. And, you know, I'd read manga, you know, sporadically. Of course, I grew up watching lots of anime and stuff. And then uh, one day I was reading some manga and I was like, dude, I could totally read this. And oh, I just started oh. killing it. And it was... Uh, I think that that one might have been Diaz Police about the foreign diaspora and in ok Okubo, near Shinjuku. Anyways, and uh, I just hammered out 13 volumes. Just read the whole, like the whole series, 13 or 17, something like that. And then I, then I really started collecting heavy. When you first started re reading manga, was it you're reading these words that you have to process it in the English and then translate it or something like that? And then when it clicks, when you go through 13 volumes... Now you're thinking in Japanese completely? Yeah, so when I read Japanese, and I, I rarely read English comic books or yeah. like manga in English or anything like that, because we just don't have access to it. So yeah, everything, it? yeah, everything <laughs> I've read here is, uh, I've read only in Japanese. And it's just kind of this, this switch flips. Once you start reading in Japanese, you get a couple pages in, then the English turns off, basically. And it's just, plus you're getting those nuances of the story with, that you lose if you're mentally translating it. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a lot of cultural vo vocabulary and cultural like aspects to the language that, uh, yeah, you just, mm -hmm. it's just easier to think about it in Japanese. Is there a manga that you could recommend that um, kind of does the opposite that Americans can engage with or a series that they could um, start investigating that would have light reading for uh, to re start reading manga in Japanese? Oh, so in Japanese, in Japanese mm -hmm. language? Yeah. Um, well, they're kind of hard to get, but I mean, one thing that I ha I have a couple of is the bilingual Kodansha series. They did, a, which are very hard to find. The Devilmans are very hard to find, but they did a few other ones as well. And those are cool because they have English and Japanese. That's cool. So it's, it's good for like learners. Mm -hmm. But for myself, I started off with Sazai-san, Doraemon, right. like really simple stuff because it was easy to grasp, um, not very long, um, not a lot of text, mm -hmm. you know? It makes perfect sense. Yeah. And then also, uh, you know, when, it sounds weird, but when I, when I was a university student, I used to check out uh, children's picture books from the library because Japanese is heavy on Giongon Gitaigo, so onomatopoeias. Um, and which if you read manga at all, you see all of the, you know, sound effects going on, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and children's books are really heavy on those. So the bata bata or the, the doro doro or like all these sound words you get from the children's books really easily. It was really funny on my, uh, on my uh, Cats and Hero Tomo hunts, looking for Tenkoban number one, uh, a gun report. Mm -hmm. And I thought the title meant it was like he did a book report on guns. <laughs> it's like one of those sound effects. Yeah. It's like one of those titles that it's the sound effect, but it's just like a literal translation of what the sound is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like Juon is Ju means gun, On means sound, so a gun report. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or like a and lot you, of you've never found that. Is that would you call that a holy grail? I actually I've never I've never found that one because it's because it's his first. Um, there's other stuff that from those early years, you know, like short pieces, pretty easy to find, 1979. Sure. But anything pre, you know, and then he's got the 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 Hansel and Gretel, which is everything 78 to 81. Yeah. But anything pre 78 is really hard unless you dig up the old sci-fi manga magazines, which I have a bunch of downstairs, and uh, some of the other ma short run manga magazines where he was doing putting out his one shots in those and that's where i find a lot of that stuff so okay that might explain some things we're at the mandarake and there's the otomo section and there are a bunch of random magazines it's not it's not young magazine so we were like no well, well maybe that's akira but that's probably has Eu like a little eureka eureka is a good one that you can find at mandarake sometimes and they're only like four or five bucks or mm -hmm. something like that Super and you can affordable. yeah and they have some otomo stuff in them um the scythe the uh, kiso kiso manga 
series. Um, he was in the first eight volumes of those. I can show you some of those later. And those actually have illustrations that were pre kaba So you can see the early sketches of like the uh, Mel Gibson uh, laying on the road with the shotgun. Right. And so the drawing. yeah, but the raw drawing before it ever ended up oh, in wow. kaba so he was putting those out in sci-fi manga magazines and stuff. I was always wondering about that, man, because even that, that drawing it has the word fireball in it, but it's not a part of the fireball manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just some of that stuff comes from everywhere. I mean, you got so much stuff, and I think one of your specialties, like one of the tricks of the trade is you go far out to go hunt this stuff down. Like, like what's a typical day for you, man? Because uh, if anybody follows the, you know, at Japan Book Hunter on Instagram... It seems like you're grabbing stuff every day. I grab stuff a lot. So I try to hit the shops at least three times a week. And when I'm hitting the shops, I'm not just going to Mandarake or Jimbocho, the used bookstore area of town, which I do go to those places as well. Yeah. Mandarake only posts, I'd say, 20% of their stuff online. So I do, I do find stuff there sometimes. But I usually go west of Broadway. I'm in Koenji, or I go down to Asagaya, or Kichijoji, west of Tokyo, to small bookstores where I've been going for years. The shop owners know me, they like me, I have, we have a good rapport with each other, so when I come into the shops, I usually expect to find some stuff I'm looking for because I know they'll buy what I, what I like. So, Do they know your business? They know my business, yeah. And, um, and so like I was showing you earlier the Kaze Shinobu magazines. Yeah. Like I asked uh, a bookstore in Shimokitazawa that I took you to in your last trip here. Yeah. And uh, when I was over there, I kept on asking them every time I was in, you got any Kaze Shinobu? You got any Kaze Shinobu? The couple times later I went in and he had a stack of four brand new magazines. Mm -hmm. Kazi Shinobu, the prequel and the postscript to Ryu, the strongest man on the face of the planet. Never seen him in the wild before, but that's just from developing those relationships with the small shops. Do the small shops, are they super fluent in manga or do you ever make like rare discoveries where you kind of no sell the emotion and you're kind of chill about it, but you just bought something mm. incredible for very, very cheap, and tell me a story or two about that. Um, yeah, uh, that, that happens too. So uh, sometimes I'll run into something in English which they don't really know at a price. So I found the 1990, what was it, 96? Sorry, 96 English version of Domu that was released in okay. England, yeah. the England release. Yeah. And I found that for a, a bargain, a bargain, because they don't know how to price the English stuff, right? Yeah. On one hand, and then... Most of the places that sell manga are really versed in, well versed in manga, but they might not be as well versed in art books. I so see. I go to a manga shop and I see some Maru Suehiro art book for 50 bucks that goes for 200 because they didn't know how to price it, you know, because they're specializing in manga. And then on the flip side, you go to the art book stores and they'll have like a little manga section over in the corner. They're art. They're into art books, photo books, stuff like that. You can find some good deals that way too. So, but usually the shops that specialize in manga usually know what they're doing because yeah. I think in today's climate, all, not everyone, but um, a lot of the shops are also selling online right. to supplement. But you know, my local lady up the road at Sankakuyama, she refuses to touch SNS. Refuses and, and, to sell and, and, online. And what is SMS? Uh, on any uh, social media. She okay. doesn't want to be on any social media. She hates typing. She hates using computers. She only uses it to price books. And mm -hmm. so uh, those are the kinds of shops I like to go to because yeah, yeah. they give you know reasonable prices and they're not you're not battling with another 10,000 people online. <clears throat> you haven't been doing this gig that long. One year anniversary coming up mm -hmm. in two weeks. So I'm excited for that. May 22nd will be one year of selling books, but um, really I was just collecting so hard. I took up all the space at my house, ended up renting the studio, you know. Even before selling books? No, I started selling and about three months into selling, I started looking for a studio space because oh. I realized it was really turning into something fun. And I needed the space. Right, right. Yeah, so it sounds like the business is doing really well for you because I, I seem to remember when we hung up the first time, you said that, uh, you know, I come back, you know, November, next November. You're looking, you're itching to, to have a storefront. I'm hoping to. Right down about a block away from where we were just uh, having lunch, I'm uh, hoping to open up a private bookstore because, as you can see, 
it's very tight in this studio. And uh, I like to get more books. I like to. Um, I have a I have a part timer who comes in and helps post stuff on the website, but we have to do shifts so that we're not in here at the same time. Otherwise, we're bumping elbows the whole time. Right. So I just need a bigger space so that I can have a part timer in here like more often. And uh, yeah, wouldn't it be cool to have a bookstore in Japan catered for my foreign customers that are into manga and where I can really showcase it, you yeah, know? I mean, it's going to become a destination location. With all of this stuff that you specialize in, there is a Western sensibility to it. The Kaze Shinobu stuff, it, it hits with an American audience. Yeah. And so much of that stuff, Ryuichi Ikigami, we're mm. very fluent in his comics, and there's so much that uh, hasn't come to America yet. Yeah. And uh, I could easily see having a storefront being a place that any comic fan like, puts on their list. Yeah, you go to Nakano Broadway, but you're getting so much shown in stuff. Mm. You know, and uh, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, you're getting to see the Japanese version of Dragon Ball. Yeah, that's cute. But this is the deep cuts that, like, it's hardcore. We'll call this, like, the, the you know, this is like the six-month check-in from when we last hung out. Uh, on your, in route to uh, having that storefront, how, how are things going? It seems like the biz is progressing at a rapid rate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't, if I, if I post on Insta, it sells, basically. I'd say 80% of, of the stuff. I have a lot of regular customers now. I've been very lucky in a lot of... Uh, uh, cartoonists, a lot of artists, um, uh, people that have way more followers than I ever would in my life and have accomplished careers by my books and buy them quite regularly. So then that's been helping out a lot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have, I have regular customers. I have a little shelf as you come into my kitchen or my studio and that's just all holds for my regular customers. So every month, you know, they, they have a five kilo box that I pack full of filthy manga right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah that that really the re the regular customers have, who've been supporting me throughout this uh this journey has really really been the backbone of it and it's actually actually like why i do it because i'm a collector myself i know what it feels like to get that book that you've been looking for you know so anytime i can do that for someone else and also i respect all these mangaka you know yeah. and i want to i think that someone like you know like Miyaya, who passed away a couple years ago, like famous Gekiga mangaka, people in Western countries should know him. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really should know him. Kazi Shinobu, people should know him, you know? Some of the lesser known uh, Takayama Tatari, lesser, lesser known uh, Shoujo horror manga, ka, people should know him. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, getting those books out to people, you know, it mm -hmm. inspires them. And I've had some friends who publish in America pick up some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And now they're translating it into English and putting it out. So that, I love to see it. So it's good for the manga as well. I see that Johnny Ryan shirt. You're, you're rocking yeah, the guy. homie, man. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I was just in L.A. Is there anything that you've been surprised by that your audience in America has been picking up that, like, um, that you weren't anticipating that they desire more than something else that you assume was more popular? That's a good question. You know, a lot of people buy stuff for art reference because they can't read it. But some people, like, they'll be, like, heavy into one mangaka. So they'll ask me to pick up everything I can find by them. And then they're reading it with, like, Google Lens or something yeah. like that to get the gist of the story. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, I, someone like uh, Koike Keiichi, who was released in English through uh, Last Gasp, I think, yeah. published Heaven's Door, yes. right? And after that came out, then I got a bunch of people started hitting me up. Oh, Can you find awesome. more Koike? Can you find more Koike? Yeah. So anytime someone does an English translation of something, like Starfruit's coming up with some uh, Miyako Kojima stuff and some Noroi uh, Michiru stuff, which are pretty underground horror mangaka, but, you know, once they get published in English, then people will be wanting more of that stuff and to be quite frank uh i have a lot of vintage adult books from the 60s and 70s i didn't know that people would like them so much but man the people that collect those because they have like illustrations from like harukawa namio when he was 16 you know like mm -hmm. inside of those when he was like dropped out of school just to draw big butts all day <laughs> you know and uh, i didn't realize that there would be such a market for those but i have regular customers that buy the old 70s Nice. you know stuff you deal in uh adult materials and things uh 
a lot of the online like p payment structures are American based, and there's like a puritanical view mm. from like your PayPal's and your Patreons yeah. and stuff. Like, have, do you have any stories about navigating those waters? Did, like one of my big nightmares is have is to have, you know, my my money locked up on PayPal or yeah. something like that. So so uh, do you have any of those kind of issues that you had to navigate to to get your business to where it is? Yeah. So one thing is, uh, after a month in, I got my credit card payments pulled down from my web store because, um, and what happens with that? Do they freeze it? Do they say, here's your money, but we're not, not dealing with you anymore. Exactly. So they gave me my money, but then they just canceled, just canceled the credit card payments. Cause so what they do is they bundle visa mastercard. They don't really care so much. It's the apples. It's oh, this okay. other Apple pay. It's these companies that they don't want anything to do with anything adult. So, um, and it's really hard to get third-party providers in Japan. So I'm at a PayPal only. PayPal is all I can take okay. from people. Because, you know, people ask if they can use Venmo. Okay, yeah. Venmo or something in America might be popular, but people in Sweden aren't using it. Yeah. I have to have something international. Um, I was on Patreon. Got kicked off that. Bondage fairies. A <laughs> little bit dangerous. Um, uh, don't post videos of bondage fairies on Pat Patreon. And uh, then... Um, for the PayPal stuff, just don't put blatant names of books that are very, you know, risque. <laughs> just put 19, used magazine, 1973. Right, I you see. Know? I uh, see. I think we have to hear the story about the issue of Akira, the first one. Yeah, a couple of days after we left mm. Tokyo last time, <clears throat> you sent me some stuff online. Uh, line the app. That the Americans don't use, but all Japanese people seem to DM using that. Yeah. And you got hold of that issue of Young Magazine with uh, Akira, the pixelated image on the cover, dude. Yep. The very first chapter. How does that happen? That was actually a local bookstore about three minutes right up the road that I go to at least every other week. Um, to, and she, she knows me well. And uh, I happened to be ordering, waiting for a pizza from Pizza Hut around the corner. <laughs> Thought I'd kill some time, go say hi to the to the bookstore, to the bookstore staff, and right when I walked in, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something yellow, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait, 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 and then I walked a little closer, and I just pointed, I was like, is that what I think it is, and she's like, yes, it is, and I was like, I don't have that much money in my wallet right now, but I will be back at noon when you open tomorrow, hold it for me, please, and then I literally, like, that night, was having a dream that she was selling it before I got that. Like it was just had permeated. And like, I was, I was nervous the night before, like, Oh God, it's going to be there tomorrow. No, she's cool. She's cool. It'll be there. But that's the thing. Support mom and pop bookstores. Cause I mean, they're going to get awesome stuff like that, that you're never going to find at a Mandarake or somewhere like that. Or if it does pop up at Mandarake, it's probably going to get auctioned mm -hmm. during one of the special auction sales. Yeah. So, or you're going to go on what Yahoo auctions and battle with someone and pay like, three grand for that mm -hmm. thing you know now how uncommon is that to find that out in the wild super uncommon because there's not that many still in existence as most people know japanese throw away magazines yeah you read and toss read and toss so sometimes i'll be walking at the park and i'm like oh there's a issue a jump I think i'll sit here and read it for a minute you know or at the train station or something i mean there's a whole underground industry that's a little bit related to the yakuza of homeless people digging through garbage cans at stations, getting magazines, and then reselling them in front of the station, right? And then salarymen running to work, well, no, 200 yen instead of 400. You know, they scoop that up. It was probably in the trash 30 minutes ago. Right. But uh, because of that, a lot of those old, like the first early issues of Akira, um, Ghost in the Shell, like these really popular uh, um, series, or like the... Uh, it could be something really popular like uh, Cutie Honey, you know, some Go Nagai stuff, some early uh, Devil Man stuff. Those magazines are long gone. There was on uh, Yahoo Auctions, I believe it was uh, about a month ago or something, uh, there is a kind of phenomenon of people who will pull out the, like, Akira sections of Young Magazine, just, like, save them, put them in a folder, and, like, sell, like, those sets. Do you ever come across that stuff? Do you, do you deal in any of that kind of thing? I don't personally. I run into them. Is no. that a, is that a, is there a name for that kind of practice or anything? Yeah, it's, I, in the, in the Japanese, it's just torn out or removed pages. 
That's it. So if you go to, we, we the first time we met, we met at, you may know, the manga shop in Jimbocho. Right. They have a little section over yes. in the corner of just stuff that's been torn out of books. Right. But for me, it's a, it's kind of a curse because yes. sometimes online, you know, like it's late at night, maybe I had a beer or something and I'll be like, oh, whoa. And the picture will be of the magazine and then I'll order something and then I'll get it and it's all, it's been... It's the pages. Yeah, yeah, it's just the pages, right? So that happened, I tried to get the Isle of Dogs, you know, based on the movie. Yeah. The, the, the movie that also was a manga. I didn't know that. So, um, and it's pretty hard to find these days. And I did that. I opened up a package. This is why I don't like buying online. Right. I just much prefer shopping because you can't tell from the pictures. Sometimes the descriptions aren't clear. And it's just nothing like finding something in a shop physically looking at it and being like, yes, someone wants this, or yes, I want this. Right. Or uh, then getting it in the mail, you know. Although I do get some stuff in the mail, of course. We, we bonded over uh, the Issy Sagawa Dojinchi serial killer memoir mm -hmm. comic. Speaking of curses. And uh, it was funny because you hit me up when you, when you found it. You found it, it seemed like you found it pretty effortlessly. Mm. When you found it, you were like, Ed, come get this fucking comic out of the <laughs> <laughs> Because I just don't want this energy. Uh, <laughs> and it came packaged with like, see, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out how to even do an episode about it. Because it comes packaged with like footage of the dead lady and shit like that. Yeah, a newspaper article yeah, of him yeah, being arrested. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. So... Do you have to go far out to find something like that? Because I was on the hunt for that for a month. I couldn't find it anywhere. So that one I actually got at a shop. And I'm sorry, guys. I don't. I'm, I stopped. I used to do these little videos where I'd show the shops I go to. Can't do it. I can't do it anymore. Can't There's too it. many tourists here now. Yeah, so yeah, like it's, it's blowing up my effect. spots. So yeah, it's a, it's a so it, and it, I was at a small West Tokyo bookstore. And I knew I knew that they carried Asahata Shoko stuff. You know, from the Om New Religion cult. And uh, like Time, Mag like they'll have like the Time magazine with him on the cover, and, and or they have the Playboy with him that, in it. That's the bom bomber guy, right? Yeah, that's he did the sarin gas bombing of uh, 1995. Yes. Um, Reason why we can't find any place to put our trash. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I came in '97, and people were telling me, "Don't drink out of the po the water fountains at the park. It could be poison." Wow. So there, there, that was two years later, and there was still like this ripple effect. Um, there was some manga that put out, like a, I, I know Kondomori did one in 1996 that was loosely based on a cult, and it was the hardest one of the collection for me to find because they never reprinted that. Mm -hmm. Like he put that out, I'm surprised it got printed in the first place. I think people were so offended yeah. that he would do it so soon after the sarin gas attack right. that, uh, yeah, the, the. Yeah, it's just too hard, too hardcore for people. And the, so the the manga Sagawa, uh, I went down there, started digging through their stuff because they have some culty stuff. Found it. <laughs> it's amazing. It. It's amazing. I found that thing out uh, about that on a, like a Vice documentary, and was like, I have to get my freaking hands on that thing, man. But uh, it's it, it's extremely hardcore. To what is it? Stage right of you, uh, stage left of you, I guess. I, I'm looking at a at a Charles Manson on the spine of a book. Oh yeah, yeah, right yeah. Right there. So, uh, do you have limits on uh, what the Japan Book Hunter will sell? You know, like like we were at Comitia, mm -hmm. and we went down the aisle, and it, there, there was these ladies who made comics of uh, that had pregnant babies, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, like that's that's a thing out here, uh, and you're dealing with international shipping and customs and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Is that an issue? Do you have like a limit of what you will sort of traffic in or? Well, for definitely for vintage adult books, I don't buy anything that looks young, right? Yeah. When it comes to manga and art, I'm pretty liberal about everything. I'm personally not a fan of like loli lolicone stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, so I don't buy it. You know, um, I have bought big lots of uh, 1970s and 1980s uh, erotic manga and had a couple issues of stuff in there that was, you know, it's hardcore. You mm -hmm. know, let's be frank, it's hardcore. But they're also drawings, people. Yeah. They're drawings, right? They're not, these aren't photos, you know, these are drawings. So uh, um, I know th th there's a couple manga cod that I've handled. 
But I tell you what, man, nothing's quite as disturbing as that manga sagawa, man. Because it's, <laughs> it's a true story. It just feels, the book feels right. haunted. And to be honest, I have the Mandarake Publishing, um, 2001. They put out this limited edition series, slipcover, um, and it's also manga, manga that Sagawa did, that Issei Sagawa did. And they all come with an original drawing, and uh, he drew 300 little gengas, little original drawings, with, mostly with a bunch of just words scribbled onto them, his nonsense inside of his head. <laughs> and they, those don't haunt me. Right. Not like that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because it really does have an effect, man. Because, like, I was so stoked. I've been hunting for that comic because we're at that place now, man, where it's like, I have every American comic that I want. Uh, there's so much, millions of almost all the popular editions of Japanese manga. So, like, you can find all of that stuff that you want. Mm -hmm. And we now have to get to Esoterica. And when you see a little snippet on a Vice video, well, I gotta go hunt for that. But then I got it, thanks to you. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I don't think I could ever do an episode on Kayfabe about that. Like, like yeah. uh, it'll it'll flip all kinds of switches on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. Nobody will see any of our videos again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, his... I go in that room, I look at that book, his face is staring at me. <laughs> he's creepy looking too. Yeah, even right. his little baby picture. Off. Yeah, even his little baby picture looks like a little demon. Yeah, he looks like a little... And he was like malnut... Like malnourished and like fragile, skinny little little teeny guy, right? Yeah. So that's why after uh, he'd gotten out of the mental institution, after he was deported to Japan, and then spent a little bit of time in a mental institution, then he was in adult films. Right. And mostly it was, you know, women stepping on his face, urinating on him. Stuff. Yeah, stuff like this, exactly. So the one where he's dressed up like the big bad wolf and a lady's like Red Riding Hood and then they do what they do and then at the end of it, the directors are like, hey, do, do you know who you just performed with? And she's like, no. And they say the name, and she's like, okay, so who's that? And then they explain his crime. Uh, and, like, and, and it was like part of the video. Uh, <laughs> that's so, so rough. Yeah. So rough. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts, man. Yeah, I try to avoid a lot of anything that's like just not in my wheelhouse. I try to sell what I like. Yes. You know, and I do like some, like, I like 1977, 78, 79 erotic action thrillers in my manga, mm -hmm. you know, and some of them get really sexy and that's, that's fine with me, you know. Um, do you even do like, uh, the second book in on that middle shelf there, uh, that big thick one. Yeah. Is yeah. that the kind of stuff, that convenience store? Yeah. So this is your, like your, your standard tonkobon, right? Something like brothers, uh, Kano Seisaku and Koike Kazuo. Yeah. Um, that's your standard tonkobon size. And then this will be what a kombiniban is. Same size, but it's going to be a bit thicker. Yes. So it's going to have more chapters in it. And some of them get really thick. Like the Berserk, based off the anime, those are big, thick bricks. Um, probably about five to 600 pages. Yeah. And uh, low quality. Low quality print. But... Uh, there's a you lot know. of like Yakuza story ones that, that I picked up last time that were uh, extremely cool. Yeah, so the, the, it's really popular for, uh, uh, you know, construction workers, something really cheap. They're only a f like 200 to 400 yen, yeah. something they can just buy during their lunch break, you know, and read on the, on the site or something like that. Or, you know, they're really accessible, but they're not really for collecting. So mm -hmm. if you find one like... Uh, I'm a big mangataro collector. He does gag manga. And when I found, when I heard that he was putting one out in the convenience store, I raced over to get one because once those are gone, they like, they're so poorly printed, you know, yeah. like they don't laugh. They don't hold up. Sure. You know? Sure. Will, uh, will you even dig around in a place like, uh, the other big chain of stores is called book off. And that seems to traffic in mostly like the the most popular of things. Mm. But will you pop your head into those places, or is it a waste of time? Waste of time, usually. I mean, it once like it's in a, a waste while. Of time for me. Yeah. Like, even, like it's like very basic. If I have time to kill and I see one, I mean, there's a couple in my neighborhood I normally just don't go to. But uh, one about uh, about a ten minute bicycle ride from here. Like I happen to go in and uh, just to kill some time. And uh, I found I found I found something. Uh, it was, uh, Shirato's, oh, I, no, was it a Kamui Den? Anyways, but, I, sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was these big anthologies. Yes. You know, so once in a while you can find something good in those, but usually it's all the mainstream stuff. There's a trick, you know. I, I found that there's a trick to, uh, 
hunting at the book off, and you take a look at the you take a look at the uh, racks, the bookshelves, and you kind of soften the focus of your eyes because there's so many series, mm -hmm. but there will be like one volume of something insane in between two series. Uh. So you grab this like single volume of something, and and like I came away uh, very happy several times. I found some Ricky O comics. Oh, nice, nice out there, and like I don't find those. Too often, I don't see them mm. at the Monterey very much. But, uh, yeah, I was curious if that was a, worth it or not. Yeah, I mean, it's worth popping into, but again, for what I do, you know, the more underground esoteric stuff, then it's it's better just for me to hit the mom and pop shops that specialize. They really do specialize in manga and, and the kind of stuff that I'm into. Will you so. hit other islands to shop? Um... Well, you know, I'm a sicko, so anytime we go on a vacation somewhere, you know, with the family, That's then I'm like, do. I'm hitting the bookstore, you know, I'm hitting the, the local bookstores and stuff, and uh, of course I go to, I go to, to um, I don't know, bookstores all around Tokyo, mm -hmm. but mostly, you know, within a reasonable dis distance, but if I happen to be in Saitama, the next prefecture over, I'll hit something up out there, because you'll find stuff that can't find in the city, you know? The you further know? out you go, do, will you find more stuff? Find different stuff. So, um, I was talking with a friend of mine, and he was... So, there's, for example, uh, uh, Black Ace magazine from the 19, late 1960s um, published a bunch of cool stuff. Really hard to find in Tokyo, but you can find it in Hokkaido, in Sapporo. Because the printing presses were out in Sapporo. Right. So that's the same reason why you can get, uh, you know, jump a day early in Sapporo from the rest of Tokyo because it's printed out there and then they ship it in, right? So I think you get you can get it there on a Sunday instead of a Monday morning. I mean, it comes like early in the morning on Sunday rather than midnight or something like that. I so you, you can get the stuff first. So some of those regional areas where they're actually printing the manga or printing the magazines you have a little bit more access to those super cool man i want to make sure that we point people in your direction so that you get that goddamn storefront by november yeah right? man <laughs> yeah sean let the people know social media where, where can they find you website social media all of it well japanbookhunter.com is the website japan book hunter on uh instagram is where i'm posting at least a few manga every day and sometimes art books photo books uh other stuff manga adjacent and then i'm uh japan Japan Book Hunter on YouTube. I used to pub put a lot more videos up, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So busy slanging that paper gold that I only put up about a video once a month or something like that over there. So fair. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us into your studio. And if, if uh, it's cool with you, when we uh, shoot some videos, take a look at your collection and see some of the stuff that you're you're slanging down there. All right. Let's take a look at it.